Hello everybody. Is my voice is clear? Someone please reply or put message. Good evening everyone. Is my voice is clear? Okay. Is it audible now? Is it clear? Okay. Without wasting time, I will start uh, with this live stream today. Sorry for late. Uh, before that, I have started uh, that one live stream because of the technical issue. It was not work yet. Work. Again, I have made one new stream. So, everyone please put a message so that all of them will join for this live stream and it will be very helpful for all of you from the sixth standard students for the sixth standard students okay we'll wait for two minutes more I am requesting all of you not to leave in between. Please watch this live stream till the end. I am going to cover all the points which are there in lesson number one. I think many students have joined. Let's begin. Okay, in front of screen, can you see two things are there? One, one is leaf and another one is animal. So these are both living things. Yes or no? So these are all, these two things are called as a living thing. So biology, it is a science which deals with the study of living life. So here we can study in biology about plants, about animals, about human beings. So living things are those which can, which have life or which exist life. Here plants are having life and even animals and human beings are having life. So let's begin with the first lesson of this. Today I'm going to explain the first lesson from sixth standard that is the leaf. So before explaining the leaf we have studied the different parts of the plant so what are the different uh, parts of the plant that is root stem leaves fruit and flower these are the different parts of the plant but this lesson it is all related to leaf so here we are going to discuss each and every point which are related to leaf means we are going to study the basic thing first then we are going to see detail of all the about the leaf first we'll start with the structure of leaf so here structure means parts of leaf so no need to get uh, into difficulty about the structure means what structure means which is a part of leaf here you may see if we go from the right hand side okay so basically this brown color it is called as the stem then node then it is uh, it is petiole then leaf lamina then it is the tip blade vein and matrix so uh, as we know that uh, leaf it is a part of the plant okay so from the stem from the stem the leaves comes out okay but from where the leaves comes out from the node then again from the node that portion which is attached to form the green color that is supported to form the green base or it is called as a blade so that brown color it is called as a petiole and the large broad surface which is attached to the petiole that is called as a leaf lamina so in another word, 
It is also called as a leaf lamina, which is broad base part of the leaf. It is called as a leaf blade. Okay, so it is called as a leaf blade, and the smallest part which gives support to the leaf blade that is called as a leaf stalk. Then leaves are what is the main characteristic of leaf? Leaves are thin, flat organ. responsible for photosynthesis in plant it develop laterally at the node laterally means outer part of the leaf outer part laterally means outer part it is an important part of the shoot system so basically in plant two parts are there so upper part it is called as the shoot portion and lower part it is called as a root portion so at the shoot system we may see this all parts like stem leaves then fruit flower and below that root system it forms only root so the structure of leaf is described as below parts of leaf we have seen leaf base peti petiole lamina together form the main parts of leaf so leaf base is nothing but it is called leaf base it is a part which where the leaf attached to the stem leaf base has two small leaves like structure called stipule so here here you may see i am showing with this arrow pointing this arrow towards this part this portion this is called as a stipule then from this the nodes you may see it is connected between this stipule so it gives it comes out from the stem petiole is a long thin stalk that links the leaf blade to the stem lamina also known as leaf blade it is a green flat surface of the leaf it consists of small branch veins and veinlets so now uh, in lamina again we may see it is divided into the a send a line which is coming out from the center of lamina that is called as a midrib so again from the midrib the lines which are coming out they are called as a vein so main function of this midrib they are providing or su supplying water and food those the veins which are coming out from the midrib they are uh, they are transporting water and food for example all veins they don't carry some of the veins may, are carrying the food and some are carrying the water and they are transporting this water as well as food to different parts of the plant then we'll go to the next that is types of leaves so depending upon the type we know that these are all basic structure but different parts are having different sizes different shape of leaves so why it is divided in uh, different shape according to the types of leaves so we'll see there are two basic types of leaves that is simple and another one that is called as a compound so what is meant by simple now uh, see here when leaf it is given so what is that it is single undivided leaf means for the veins which are coming out from this uh, sorry uh, from this node one node is there from that uh, single node the single leaf comes out so this type of leaf is called as a simple leaf because it is not divided again too many you know into too many leaves it is divided it, the, it is only a single leaf whereas in compound leaves it is divided into uh, through the nodes many leaves will come out okay so here you may see many leaflets are there many leaflets are there and which are coming out from the single node so leaf divided into multiple leaflets attach at the stem from that stem so many leaflet you may can you may see over here from the 
नोट्स सच टाइप ऑफ लीव आर कॉल्ड एज अ कंपाउंड लीव सो इट इज वॉट इज मीन बाय सिंपल लीव इट इज अ सिंगल लीव विथ अनडिवाइडेड लीव फ्लेट्स दैट आर डायरेक्टली अटैच टू द स्टेम इट इज ऑलवेज अटैच टू अ ट्वेल्व बाय स्टेम और बाय द पिट्योर सो मैपल एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक मैपल ओक बनाना गावा मैंगो ब्लैक चेरी ब्लैक गम एंड स्वेट गम सेकेंड कंपाउंड लीव अ लीव दैट इज कंपोज ऑफ मल्टीपल लीव लेट दैट आर अटैच टू द मिड वेन एंड हैविंग दर ओन स्टॉक सो स्टॉक हियर दे आर हैविंग ओनली दे आर हैविंग देर ओन स्टॉक दिस इज अबाउट द सिंपल एंड द कंपाउंड लीव देन वील गो टू द नेक्स्ट अबाउट द venation what is meant by venations venations are nothing but the veins which are present uh, along with the midrib and which carries water as well as food and they transport to different parts of the plant so there are there may be different types of venation here it is divided into two that is parallel venation and second reticulate venation parallel means means the lines which are not joined to each other they are traveling in a straight line so in this way only we can find it out here this parallel veins are not joined to each other they are they are uh, flowing like a parallel so such type of venation Yeah, we can see here that is parallel venation and second one that is reticulate venation. We'll see its we'll see the description of first reticulate venation. In this type of venation, veinlet forms a network. So here in the reticulate, this is the second figure which helps us to know how this reticulate venation it is different from this parallel venation. so here you may see the veins which are coming out from this midrib they are forming like a net like a net they are forming so this network of veins which are present on this leaves and such a uh, pattern they are following in some kind of leaves so the, so such pattern they uh, followed by the leaves are called as a reticulate venation then where we can find this types of reticulate venation where only in the dicotyledonous plants dicotyledonous plants means uh, the plants which are having two cotyledons for example groundnut then peas so these kinds of plant are having two cotyledons two cotyledons means two uh, leaf uh, blade two leaf blade so this uh, blades are having two that's why the name given it as a dicotyledonous it consists of two so in this type of plant we can see the reticulate type of venation then second parallel venation in this type of venation the veins run parallel to each other parallel venation is generally a characteristic of monocotyledonous plants so monocotyledonous plants uh, means uh, cotyledons are present in that plant is only one single it is so in this such type of plant uh, we can see parallel venation for example uh, for example here it is given ginkgo biloba so the the veins branch from each other like a tree branches veins contain vascular bundle that is xylem and phloem which transport water mineral to leaf lamina and sugar to rest the plant part respectively then we'll go to the main and important part of this uh, lesson that is leaf function so there are three main important functions of leaf first leaves are specialized structure for carrying out the photosynthesis then leaves lose water through stoma or it is a singular it is stoma plural we can say as a stomata in a process called transpiration lost water is replaced by water drawn through the xylem leaves are the site of exchange of uh, gases 
uh, gas exchange they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen during photosynthesis one by one we are going to see in detail what is meant by photosynthesis so for carry out the process of photosynthesis two important things are required that is first one uh, water so from where the plant gets water as we know the roots which are present inside the soil and the main function of the root they absorbs water and they start supplying water to uh, to the different parts of the plant so from root absorbs the water from the soil so from the soil they get the water and second thing carbon dioxide so in atmosphere as carbon dioxide is present so this carbon dioxide is taken inside by the leaves so uh, through the leaves uh, in leaves as stomatas are present the main function of the stomata the exchange of gases takes place which gases are exchanged first they will take carbon dioxide from the air and this two are the basic thing first one water and second one carbon dioxide so here when this two things comes together but always when this process or reaction uh, must be carried out or will takes place when it should be the energy or so this uh, which is required they are getting from the sunlight okay so sunlight how they are getting this energy uh, chlorophyll which is present in the leaf which is a green pigment they trap the energy from the sunlight so basically this two and uh, in presence of sunlight water and ox carbon dioxide get uh, means uh, added in presence of sunlight so they gives oxygen and food so food it is present in the pre present in the form of sugar or it is called as a glucose so in this way the food is prepared by the leaves some food get stored some food get stored for example some glucose will get stored and some food will get uh, supplied or transported to other parts of the plant so that glucose which is stored it is not stored in the glucose box but it is stored in a starch form then we'll go to the next that is transpiration here on the leaves we know that stomatas are present so here exchange of gases takes place in the stomata stomatas if we will check under the microscope or we observe under the microscope the leaf here on the leaf we may see the small pores are pores are present on the leaf so these pores what they do the exchange of gases which gases are exchanged uh, this carbon dioxide which is absorbed okay uh, exchange of gases which takes place carbon dioxide and oxygen gas exchange takes place and uh, the roots which are absorbing water from the soil the water is present in the plant now here what is the transpiration so that small openings which are present that is not nothing but called as a stomata so the, this water the evaporation takes place excess of water which is not required by the plant may be given out so this process is called as a transpiration then we'll go to the next that last about the um, production of energy we know that chlorophyll which is present inside the plant is a green pigment that uh, with the help of uh, sunlight they trap the energy and uh, in this process what they give they take in oxygen uh, sorry they take in carbon dioxide and they give out oxygen so this process is nothing but called as a process of respiration the next point of this lesson that is modification of leaf modification of 
Leap. Okay. Modification of leap. Uh, here it is divided into three. That is leap tendrils, leap spines, and scale leap. Why there is a there should be a modification of leaf because in some conditions the plants which are present in that area or because of the unfavorable condition the plant has to survive for that purpose the leaves are getting modified means they are getting change uh, their change according to the uh, changes will take place in the leaf. So leaf tendrils are there, leaf spines are there, and scale leaves are there. So here, leaf tendrils, how it look like? Here, you may see one leaf is growing out from this node, and again from the same node, one thin coiled wire, it is seen, which is coming out from the node. So here, the leaf it is modified into this tendril okay so the leaf is modified into this tendril why because this leaf there will be the if the why the modification is there according to the unfavorable condition there will be the change in the shape of the leaf and that will help to survive so this leaf tendrils is nothing but it is a modification of leaf example grape wine peas so these are the examples which comes under leaf tendrils and we will move to the next one this is called as a cactus in desert area in hot places the plants which may we can see on the leaf there will, will be the modification into the spines the spines will grow on the leaf the spines will you may see the spines are growing on the leaf why because to because of this condition the rate of transpiration will be very less and in that desert area this plants can survive so this is the example of cactus and it comes under leaf spine the next one it is scale leaves here onion and garlic are the two examples which comes under the scale leaf. Here you may see inside this, if we cut the onion, here at the center, the bird is there. Bird is there. Okay, this is called as a bird. So this bird, to protect or give uh, protection from the external atmosphere or uh, external condition, the scales which are present, means the scales are nothing but it is the modification of leaves. So these are the few examples that we have seen under the modification of leaves. We will go to the next that is modification of leaves in insectivorous plant. So what is meant by insectivorous plant? Plants which are depending for the food on insects are called as a insectivorous plant means indirectly they are all carnivorous plants carnivorous plants means uh, we know that it is divided uh, carnivores and herbivores are the two things carnivores means which depend on the flesh for uh, as uh, they depend for, for the food uh, they depend on uh, their main food is the flesh so here uh, insectivores their main food is insect so it, uh, three types of plants are there Examples, example, peacher plant, bladder wort, and venous fly trap. So, peacher plant, bladder wort, venous fly trap. What is the mechanism or how they are trapping this uh, insect and how they are uh, digesting? We'll see the mechanism first. We know that all plants prepare their food, so they don't have to depend for the food on the other. But there are some plants they prepare. They also prepare the food with the help of photosynthesis, no doubt. But this peach of plant, bladder wort, and Venus flatra, they prepare their food with they prepare the food with photosynthesis as well as they depend on the insect. Okay, how uh, so they are having some modification. See here. 
this is a picture of feature plant when insect is there here at the top you may see this insect sorry you may see this insect okay so this is how this leaf is modified in such a way that they will trap this insect inside it so once they will trap or this insect uh, will get inside this it is called as a feature okay inside this it is called as a feature and the inside the feature uh, inner layer of this feature are having it is made up of scales uh, and the outer part at the top it is having a lid so once this insect will get inside this feature automatically the lid will get closed and the insect is will be trapped inside and because of that scale which are present inside it the feature the insect will die so that insect will die and what the what will happen the protein which is present inside this uh, inside this uh, insect will be get mixed with the digestive juices which are present inside this feature plant and the nitrogenous substances which will be given out by this feature plant when this mixing of digestive juices as well as this protein they give out nitrogenous base and will be absorbed by the feature plant so in this way the digestion takes place when the insect is trapped inside the feature plant same mechanism is followed with the bladder wort this is a bladder wort plant so here this uh, yellow color flower it is there inside it again the lid is there and if the insect but as we have seen one difference is there between the bladder wort and the feature plant so here you may see a big insect can be trapped but one thing is there in this bladder wort small insects only will be getting trapped under the bladder wort big insect will be will not be get trapped we'll go we'll move to the next that is it is called as a venus fly trap venus fly trap so as the name only helps us to know or give idea that this helps in trapping when the insect will come inside automatically the trap or the vena of that uh, leaf blade will get closed and the insect will be found dead inside uh, last topic of this lesson vegetative propagation what is meant by vegetative propagation it is the it is a asexual reproduction taking place in plants through which new plants are developed basically two types of uh, re, uh, production uh, reproduction are there sexual mean and second one by the asexual mean as here in the vegetative propagation no male or female gametes are involved only the vegetative part are help was to uh, helps to reproduce the plant new plant so new plants are developed from the vegetative part so what are the vegetative plant part that is root stem leaf so from any part the new any from this any part of the vegetative part new plant will be developed such type of propagation now is called as a vegetative propagation then next two types of example first we'll see about the bryophyllum this is the example of bryophyllum here a leaf is there okay so this is the vegetative part of plant from where the uh, vegetative part of the plant which helps us to give a uh, produce new plant here or uh, at the edges or at the margin you may find this birds which are present bird okay so from this bird when it comes in contact with the soil here new plants are developed here new plants are developed for so, such type of propagation are um, such type of propagation with the help of bird or with the help of leaf leaf which uh, in which birds are there 
is called as a which develop into the new plant called as a vegetative propagation this is one example this plant leaf is of a of bryophyllum second this is a leaf this is a leaf of begonia plant okay so this begonia plant again we are using which part for this propagation leaf leaf on this leaf again bird is there so when this leaf comes in contact with the soil from that bird new pa new plant is produced so this is about the begonia so till now we have studied about the different means basic type basic part of the plant what we have discussed we'll do some re recap external structure of leaf then kinds of leaves types of venation function of leaves modification of leaves insectivorous plants and last one vegetative propagation so that's all for today children have you, hope you have all uh, mm, all of you have cleared the doubts if anybody is having any questions please write in the chat box so that i will here try to give the answer okay then i'm going to end this meeting children so thank you for joining okay bye